family, it's Pastor Carrie here. So good to be back with you for another 15-minute daily devotion. Listen, in our time together, I love that we're able to connect the biblical with the practical to help empower us every single day. Listen, I want you to like this. I want you to share this. And I want you to comment on this if it's something that is blessing you or resonating with you. Listen, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, we are so glad that you are here. And I want to just jump right into our devotion for today. Listen, today our focus is going to be, it's never too late. Wherever you are, I want you to just type this in your chat. It's never too late. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that it is never too late to make a change. Listen, Academy Award winning actress and fitness guru, Jane Fonda once said, it's never too late. Never too late to start over. Never too late to be happy. George Eliot shares with us, it's never too late to be what you might have been. Lisa Magdigan shares with us, it's never too late to correct our mistakes. And the legendary Maya Angelou shares with us, as long as you are breathing, it's never too late to do some good. Robert Kirsten says, it's never too late in life to have a genuine adventure. And George Burroughs shares with us, it's never too late to be great. Finally, Peppa shares with us, there's nothing you can't overcome. So it's never too late for happiness. Listen, I've just read to you seven different quotes from people from various backgrounds, from various genres, professions, and ethnicities with different experiences. And the resounding theme that they all have in common is that they all agree that it's never too late. In all of the time we've shared together over the last couple of months in our 15 minutes together, or if you've even heard me speak or share outside of this platform, out of all of the things that you have heard me say, I pray that you learn this one thing from me today, and that is simply that it's never too late. One of the greatest excuses or pretexts that impede change and transition is us constantly telling ourselves that it's just just too late. This notion that it's too late has ruined families. It has destroyed so many dreams prematurely. It has caused people to forfeit their destiny and their purpose. It has caused early death. It has destroyed health and marriages. It's ruined good relationships. It's caused impulsive bankruptcy and even impulsive foreclosure. And it has caused many to abandon who they are, who we are. And it caused causes us to quit on ourselves because we believe it's too late. When you believe it's too late, you begin to shut the door on beautiful possibilities for your life. And you begin to create limitations in your life that ultimately cause you to settle for less. It's too late is simply a limiting belief that keeps you trapped and imprisoned. It keeps you in bondage without the understanding that there is always more and that there is always ways greater to come for you. Galatians 5 and 1 says, stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. It says, and do not be entangled again to the yoke of bondage. Listen, every single time you say that it's too late, whether you think it or you verbalize it with your mouth, every time that you say it, you enslave yourself again. You place yourself in a self-induced prison. When you operate in this belief in one area of your life, what begins to happen is it starts to bleed into every area of your life. And it will begin to strangle your dreams. It'll begin to choke your vision and goals for your life. And if this is true, if what, if what you believe is true, you will then begin to believe that it's too late for everything in your life. And you then can begin to live with the spirit of bitterness, of pain, and that of regret. Hebrews 12, 12 and 15 says, take care that no one falls short of the grace of God, that no one growing up like a root of bitterness causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Ephesians 4 and 31 says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Job 21 and 25 says, another dies in bitterness of soul. Yeah, it says, never having tasted 
of prosperity. Listen, you can always tell when a person is bitter and they're living in a space of believing it's too late because everything about them is negative. Their language is negative. How they walk is even negative. Their energy is negative and they will begin to downplay your ideas. They'll downplay your visions. They'll downplay your goals because the truth is misery loves company. And when a person is bitter, when they believe that it's too late for them, ultimately they want you to believe that it's too late for you as well. So every time you come talking to them about a new vision, every time you come talking to them about a new idea, every time you tell them you want to go back to school, you want to start a new family, you want to launch a new business, they will begin to make you feel like it's too late for you to do too. And that, that, that negative spirit will get on you and you'll start to second guess what God told you based upon the bitter people that you are connected to. Listen, some of us say that it's too late, not because we truly believe that it is, but what has happened is we have become accustomed to making excuses to justify mediocrity. And so we begin to use it as a cop-out or a justification not to take the risk. We use it as a reason not to pursue our dreams, as a reason not to pursue our vision, as a reason to not fulfill our destiny and purpose, and ultimately not to live out our divine call in the earth. Many of us have become cowards. Yes, I said it. Many of us have become cowards because we find every reason possible to quit rather than to change, rather than to grow. You will come up with reasons to justify giving up. But when it's time for us to push on, we find ourselves weak and timid because we believe that it's too late. But today, I want to encourage you, today is ultimately your day of change. I am declaring to you that whatever you thought was too late now comes into alignment with God's divine timing. Whatever you thought was impossible now becomes possible due to the will of the Father. Second Peter 3, 8 through 9 says, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. It says, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. Yeah, and it says, and a thousand years are like a day. It says, the Lord is not slow, hallelujah, in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Listen, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1 says, there is a time for everything, and a season for every activity under the heavens. Lamentations 3, 25 through 26 says, the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. Yeah, it says to, to the one who seeks him, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Listen, I hope that that moment, those scriptures, those passages encouraged you. I want to share with you, I've been reading for the past couple of weeks, Jack Canfield. And so he shares a few stories in his book the success principles, how to get from where you are to where you want to be. If you don't have this book, I would highly encourage you to get it. One of the stories that he shares is that of Julia Child, one of the most famous chefs in history. Didn't even learn to cook until almost 40 years old. And she didn't even launch her popular television show until she was almost 51. Somebody would have said it's too late for her, but she knew better. He he tells us about Elizabeth Jolly, who published her first novel at the age of 56 with great success. But can I tell you, prior to, she received 39 letters of rejection in one year. Somebody else would have said, it's too late. I got to give up. They keep on rejecting me. But she continued to press forward. He talks to us about Nola Oaks, who in 2007, hear this, at the age of 95, graduated from Fort Hass State University with a degree in history. Can you believe that? At 95, she had become the eldest person to graduate with a college degree. Listen, if a 95-year-old can take the risk to go back to school and get a degree, tell me, what is your excuse? What is the reason why you won't pursue the thing that you're supposed to do and you keep saying that it's too late? Listen, President, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris Harris, listen, according to Modded Toys on IG, met her, the love of her life, hear this, at, at age 49. 
She got married at age 50. She is now 56 years old and what many would describe at the peak of her career, and look who she is, the first female vice president of the United States of America. Something in her knew that it was not too late, not only to grow in her profession, but even in love. Let's look at President-elect Joe Biden, who has now become the eldest president of the United States of America America at age 78, a position that he had been pursuing since the age of 45. Can you imagine where he would be if he decided that it was too late for him? Can you imagine where he would be if he had decided God is taking too long to do this for him? Can you imagine what the state of all of these people that I just shared with you, who they would have been, what the world would have missed out on if they believed it was too too late. Listen, when you understand that it's never too late, life begins to start for you and things will begin to shift in your favor. Why? Because the moment that you begin to take this posture, you will begin to remove all excuses. You will begin to move all, remove all of your limitations, all of your boundaries, all of your barricades begin to move. And you then begin to create a space for God to be God in your life, for God to do what he desires to do. Hear this, based upon his timing and not your timing. When you stop believing that it's too late, you'll stop believing that you are too old. Yeah. You'll stop believing that you are too young. You will even stop believing that you are too poor, that you are too uneducated, that you are too unattractive. All of these excuses begin to go out of the window. And what be will begin to happen for you is you will begin to start resting in the fact that God has already already given you everything that you need to succeed. You will begin knowing that as long as you have breath in your body, yeah, as long as you are able to get up, as long as you are able to see another day, that it is not too late. I don't care what your condition is. If you are alive and you are breathing and you are here, it is not too late for you. One of the things that I constantly have to tell myself and I want to tell you today is that we've got to stop watching the clock. We've got to stop watching watching the clock and as my mother would say we have to begin to look to the hills yeah from whence cometh our help for we know that our help doesn't come from a clock our help doesn't come from us measuring the time on our own but our help comes from the Lord when you begin to understand that there is time and that it's never too late you will stop waiting on people to acknowledge you yeah you will even stop waiting on people to affirm you or celebrate you and you will begin to trust in God that there is more. And you will begin to tap into a greater sense of yourself. You will remove people from your space who have limiting beliefs about themselves. Because if they have limiting beliefs about themselves, they will have limiting beliefs about you as well. And you'll begin to connect with people who believe that with God all things are possible. Listen, how much time have you wasted believing that you didn't even have time? Isn't that something? We waste time because we don't think that we have time. How much more could you have accomplished if you, if you just took the leap, if you believed that God had laid everything out for you? Listen, according to 2190.com, it's never too late to achieve your goals, and they give seven tips to meet your success. Listen, the first thing that they say is write down every goal, no matter how big or small. Visualize what you want. you got to be able to see that thing clearly. Create a timeline for when you would like to hit each target. They say break your goals up into small, manageable ones so that you can reach your targets easier. It says create a little incentive, yeah, by rewarding yourself every time you achieve a goal. Find your purpose. Can I say it again? Find your purpose and get into the habit of brainstorming and scheduling time for yourself to think, to be creative. And listen, finally they say, always have your goals in the back of your mind. Not even in the back of your mind, in the forefront of your mind, where you can even see them, where you've written the vision to make it plain. And live a life geared towards reaching them, hear this, and not against them. I love the late, great Miles, Dr. Miles Monroe, because one of the things that he shares is that when you understand purpose and you understand vision, it begins to streamline your life. You will be 
begin to live differently. Listen, can I tell you today, can I encourage you today that whatever you thought was too late, the Holy Spirit sent me to tell you that it is not too late, that you are exactly where you are supposed to be, that God has this thing divinely mapped out for you. The only thing that he is waiting for is that you acknowledge that it's not too late and you begin to move on the thing that God has told you to move on. How long will you be pregnant with that vision? How long are you going to sit on that dream? How long are you going to wait around for somebody to do something for you when God has already given you the power and the authority to do it for yourself? So I curse this spirit of believing that it's too late, but we know that with God, all things are always on time. Yeah, he is never late. And if you look at his record, it will show you that he is always there when he needs to be there, that he shows up exactly when he needs to. So listen, I pray that today you were challenged, that today you were blessed and you will begin to take those thoughts of it being too late out of your heart and your mind and that you will go full throttle, full speed ahead in the things that God has anointed you to do in the earth. Because can I tell you, the world needs you. We are waiting on your ideas. We are waiting on the things that God has placed in your belly for you to share with us. And as long as you believe it's too late, you continue to rob us of the very thing that we need from you. Listen, on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, we are so glad that you are here. Thank you for joining me today. Listen, if you want to join this community where we don't believe it's too late, we know that as long as God is moving, we have time because he has divinely positioned us. You can join right now by going to newbirth.org. And if you say, Pastor Carrie, I don't want to wait till tomorrow to sow. I want to sow right now. You can do that using the prompts below. I love you. I'm praying for you always. I believe in you, and I'm looking forward to from for great things to be produced from your life. See you soon. And now, New Birth, it's time for your video announcements. New Birth, we'd like to thank you for sewing into our 365 campaign. And the service was supernatural. And it's not too late for you to fulfill your commitment. God can change your entire year in one day. Don't forget to pick up your copy of Dr. Brian's dynamic series, 365, A Year in a Day, in our Call to Conquer bookstore. This powerful series is available for you to own right now, so don't miss it. Join us as we partner with Samaritan purse for Operation Christmas Child Shoe Box Giveaway. Just find a cardboard or plastic shoe box. Then decide if the box is for a girl or boy. Then all you have to do is fill the shoe box with gifts. Then we want you to pray for the child who will receive the box. You can drop your boxes off at New Birth between December 5th and 6th at the King's Table Saturdays from 10 a.m. until noon at the Samson Fitness Center or at the New Birth Main Entrance. Or donate $20 through PushPay to sponsor a child shoe box. Each and every week, we're still blessing the community with over 8,000 people weekly. To this day, the King's Table has served over a half million people this year. And we just want to spread the word about the King's Table. That's right, every Saturday from 10 a.m. until 12 noon. Free groceries for any and everyone right here at Newburgh. Also, don't miss the Next Gen Pop-In, the spot for young adults and millennials, and the Girls Edition Hangout. For more info, visit newbirth.org and... And our bereavement ministry presents Real Talk Grief Support, coping with grief during the holidays, Monday, November 23rd, 7.30 p.m. RSVP to grief support at newbirth.org to receive a Zoom link. And that's all we have for our video announcements.